try session two if we don't get blown away from this. So <laughs> it's already, I noticed we were checking the speed, it's already 15 to 20. So 15 to 20, that's when it starts blowing later on, it'll get a little nasty. But for right now, this is nice flying weather. So, real quick, this is session two. We're going to talk about several things today, but let me recap briefly what we discussed before. In the original uh, presentation we did a couple weeks ago at the membership meeting, we talked about using aerobatics to do several things. Number one, just have some fun with it because it's fun to do. Number two, it helps you break in your engine and extend your engine life as well as your batteries. And also, it puts you in a position where you might have the opportunity to save your plane. Being more comfortable with being inverted, unusual positions, vertical down lines. If you get disoriented, it's like, I've been there, I've done that, so I know how to, I have the confidence now to get out of that particular situation. And you'll probably find that 90% of the crashes are pilot error. Even though we like to say that I lost the servo or my, my radio cranked out or something happened or the sun was in my eyes, typically 90% of it is pilot error. We've all put them in, we all know what happened, and if you have a little bit more confidence, a little bit more skill, those are the ones we hope we can save. Some of the ones are just mechanical problems and there's no hope. But in most cases, you get disoriented, not quite sure where we're at, and all of a sudden, there's the ground. Are you always supposed to tell your wife, or can we keep talking to <laughs> Oh, never tell your wife. Like, like we said before at the meeting, you know, flying some of these maneuvers, you, know, you get in a situation where your heart rate starts to pump up a little bit, the adrenaline starts to kick in, so when you leave to go to the field, you should never tell your wife you're going flying. Tell her you're going to work out. You're going to pump up your heart rate. Don't bend. Yeah, don't, that's the truth, you know, it's the truth. You're a little sliding it just a little bit, but still, we're, we're close. Last week we talked about how to fly a loop, and I just talked about how I visualize it, and a lot of it for pilots visualize it different ways. But when I talk about flying a loop, I fly four quadrants. One, two, three, and four. I try to get my points, try to measure those points. Basically, I look at it like this. I fly quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. And when I set up that quadrant one, that establishes the radius I'm trying to match all the way around. And so basically, I visually just kind of flop that over and try to trace it out in the sky. Now, with a little luck, you're flying into it again. Aerobatics is all lines and curves. Flying in on that nice straight line, going full throttle, starting to pull that curve, hitting point two. There's my radius I'm trying to match. I try to trace that up to point three, point four, and back to point one again. And when you practice that, visually you start to get a feeling of what that looks like and how it feels. And when you start to get comfortable with that, you can challenge yourself, I'll fly one. And let's see if I can trace the second one in the same route. Let's see if I can make it three. And just see how far you can go on tracing that loop, trying to hold those points and trying to hold that circus circle with that constant radius. So that's when it starts to challenge yourself. We also talked about the reverse cube and eight. The nice thing about the reverse cube and eight, it puts you into an inverted position, which most of us are at least comfortable with. When we're going in a 45 degree upline, we're most able to survive it. So if something goes wrong, we're still going up, and okay, I still got time, I can pull out of it. But it gives you practice of being inverted in the least threatening situation. Instead of flying four feet off the ground across the runway with the tail dragging the dirt, we're up here in the air and we're inverted. Same thing on the top of the loop. We're inverted on top of the loop. Okay, we're way above the ground. Gravity's our friend. We know we're gonna come back down and I have time to recover. If for some reason I get screwed up up here, I'll just let the plane drift and come on down. This week we're gonna talk about uh, Hamelman's Humpty Bumps and Hammers. And actually it might be a good idea. Let me go ahead and do this again. Continue to point three, and now I've reached elevation. 
I'm going to do a half roll and just go ahead and continue flying. So if you've mastered the loop or had practice at the loop, the Immelman is just half of that. 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 I'm inverted, gracefully roll over to upright and continue on. And this is a great maneuver obviously for gaining elevation. Now, I didn't really talk about it, but on the other than the spectrum, if I'm up here, we do something called a split S, I just roll to inverted, and I pull another half loop. Here I'm at 0 0.3, 0 0.4, back to 1. So if you're comfortable with doing that loop, you're basically doing an Immelman and a split S. Here we're just kind of separating them. We're doing that half loop, roll to upright, fly across the box, do a half roll, come back down, fly to upright. And that's a great maneuver again to practice when we talk about, yeah, sure. That implement comes up and I'm looking uh, yes, at the diagram give, right. here. Give us a point, okay. sir. Where that arrow is, that's where you flip it? You don't go straight for a while and flip it? No. That's correct. As, that, the, as the airplane comes through the horizon, so as the nose, as, as, as the loop ends, at the, right at the very top, the apex of the loop, that's when the roll starts. There's no, there's no straight line and then a roll. So it's an immediate, Right. Well, that's I guess a good it's kind of stupid here, but I guess that's yeah. why the little arrow's here. That's why the arrow's there. Right, right. there at the top of the apex of the curve, right. If I come up here? Yes. and I continue to fly that line for a while, and then I roll, if you're in competition, that's yes. a two-point deduction. Because you'll also see some guys, if they come up, and usually if you, if you roll and you're, you're not balanced well, if you roll a little bit right here, your plane will sink. You'll see some guys come up, and while they're still going up just a little bit, we'll start to roll and cheat and fall into our level. Okay. That's a deduction too, if the judges catch that, versus coming up, rolling and sinking. Now we'll talk a little bit more about controlling that roll. We'll do a full roll at the end. Actually, it's the first maneuver that starts the basic sequence, but it can be one of the more difficult ones in order to hold it level. But we'll show you kind of how to do that. So the element, roll, and the same thing for split S. If I roll inverted and continue to fly for a while, that's a deduction. Flip it back over at the top. Do you do it uh, quick or do you do it slow? That's your preference. It doesn't matter. Typically, a lot of people try to do it quick so your plane doesn't sink. Yeah. If you come over and do it slowly, you'll need a little bit of rudder control, maybe a little bit of elevator control to keep it nice and smooth. So it depends on how you're trying to present the maneuver to a judge or whether you're just trying to have fun. Typically, you're going to come up, roll it fairly quick so you don't lose altitude. If you get better at it and you want to play a little bit, you'll come back up. I'll do a slow roll, fly across the box, do a slow roll, and pull the split S. That's just kind of the things you play with as you get more comfortable, especially about being inverted at this point. That's probably the most frightening thing for most pilots, is being inverted because a lot of the controls are crossed and opposite, and that's where you can get in trouble, you can get in trouble fairly easily. But again, half loop, roll, roll, and half loop. And again, John will demonstrate some of these. It'll be especially fun today to demonstrate them in the wind because that adds some additional challenges to it. Sid, I think it's really important to note that when you start that you don't want your nose up. So often I see basic pilots just doing a single roll, which is in basic, and they tend to pull the elevator and raise the nose before they start the roll. It's a different maneuver. That's a deduction. Starting that roll at point three on his half inside loop, your tangent to that half loop at the top, you don't want that nose up, pointed up, to guard against the plane falling. It should start, and if whatever that angle is, a good judge is going to deduct you one point for ten degrees. And I think it's one point for ten degrees in pattern. So you want to.
here is a you know thing that I use, and I use this when I'm practicing as well. It's just a protractor chart. I say, well, it's a point for 10 degrees. What's 10 degrees? Well, that's 10 degrees. So you see that thing move. That's 10 degrees. This way, that's 10 degrees. That's a point. That's two points. That's a point. That's two points. If you see it just twitch, 